Today's video is going to take us through function tables. This is the beginning part of the graphing unit. So this is kind of the basic starting point of what we need to do in order for us to graph lines. Uh, so there's a few things that we will be taking care of with function tables. Uh, function tables are something that we work with in math uh, on different bases. Uh, sometimes we may not count, count them as functions. Uh, we may call, uh, call them sequencings, uh, and we'll deal with those later as well. So it's basically you get a number. Um, what that number is is we call it the input. Uh, we take it through what we call a function rule, uh, which is you might add 3 or add 2, uh, and the outcome is what comes out of that addition or subtraction, multiplication, division, depending on what the rule is. So functions are an algebraic way to work with numbers. Um, there is a relationship between the two numbers, and we'll talk about that. And the other thing is you have to try it with all of the numbers in the table. And you'll see that as we go. So you'll need to match different things. So they're going to give you the equation. You have to match the function table, or you have to uh, be given the equation or the function table and you have to match the equation. Um, so that is what we're going to take care of. Some of the terms that you're going to hear and need to know for this section, uh, one is domain. Uh, domain is the input value. So what are you putting into the equation and the range is what you're getting out of. Uh, and those are going to be valued as our x and y. So our domain would be written as uh, a set of numbers uh, using the braces and the range would also be written as a series of or a sequence of numbers. Uh, the domain or input represents the x value. Uh, the range is the y. Uh, what they do together is we put them together as an ordered pair and this is where we start getting into our graphing stuff. The other couple words that you need to know, constant doesn't change. So the function table, the rule that you come up with will stay consistent throughout the whole uh, table. Uh, the variable is what changes. So the input and output numbers are variables since you can change them accordingly to uh, the constant in the regards to the function. So once you come up with that, you can determine what's going to happen in regards to what you put in and what you get out of it. So Certain equations you can write. Um, there's different ways of working them. Uh, the ones that we're going to focus on will look like this. One thing to notice is we are going to be working with two different variables, an x and a y. And again, <clears throat> those will be used for your ordered pairs. So your x actually goes with the x in the ordered pairs. The y actually goes with the y in the ordered pairs. Um, when you get into algebra later on next year, uh, y is replaced with f of x. So I'm going to kind of show you that so you're not uh, unfamiliar with it as we go through this and get you into next year. So function tables are generally just used to organize what your numbers are, your input to your outputs. And you can also put your function rule in there as well, and you'll see that through the examples that we're going to do. So in step one, you're given a function table, your input, output, input is your left side, output is your right side, input is your x, output is your y. So as you look at this, you want to look at the rule of what's taking place in there, or try and find the rule. So you ask yourself, how do I get from 2 to 5, 8 to 11, and so forth. So you may think about it as going in this direction, or you can go backwards and say, well, how do I go in that direction? So there's a lot of different ways that you can look at this. It's up to you to figure out the function of it. Um, but basically, it's going to be the four operations in math that you're going to work with. Uh, so step two, once you've figured out, OK, am I going to do this? Am I going to do that? Am I going to multiply? Am I going to divide? Am I going to add or subtract? Now you start fixing and putting into work the function. And if you looked at this one, hopefully you found that the rule is you added 3 to each of the numbers for the input to get the output. So again, here's just a checking of it. You're looking at 2 plus 3, 5, 8 plus 3, 11, and so forth. 
make sure that it works for all of the numbers in the columns. If you don't, then something's wrong with your function rule and you have to go back and start over. So some examples that we're going to use. So if we give you um, the function of y equals x plus 3, does that represent what's in the table? So what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to actually um, solve what we're going on. So the, the way we do that is we use substitution. We've done this this year. All we're doing is substituting numbers in for letters. So here's our chart again. So we have three rows of this. We have to make sure that we do it three different times as we go through it. So you simply just write your three equations down and you start plugging numbers in. Does it equal what you're asked? Yes, it does. Move on. Now notice in our table up there that our X and Y's have been flipped, so be very careful when you look at these to see what happens as you go through and check these. So as you move through these, you can see that they do check and they work out by using the function of adding 3 to them. So as we go through this, you have to make sure that you are looking at it all the way through it and you have to do all three parts of it. So we can also be given a function table and they give you choices for the rule. So you have to go through and figure out, well, what the heck do I have to do? I got to start plugging numbers in. So here are our A, B, C, D choices. So if I start plugging numbers in, you'll notice that that one does not work because they do not equal. Same with the second one, they do not equal. Third one, now if we subtract it, we do get that correct. Our last one, we do not get an equal sign. So that one is the one that works. So if we use it for the rest of the table and figuring out what is working, that's what we're doing here in regards to checking all the numbers that are in the chart. And again, you have to do that for everyone to prove it. If it doesn't, it doesn't work for the whole chart. So if we prove it, when we look at this, our answers come up to be no, no, yes, and no. But again, we have to check everything. Okay. So we can be given the function, and then you have to find the correct function table. So this one's a little bit more work to do when you do this, but be careful with this. Make sure that you show your steps, and it's pretty easy math that you're doing. So again, we throw everything up on, on the work shown, and we just start plugging numbers in. If they don't equal, they are not a part of the function, or the function rule does not work. Once they do equal, now we look at, okay, I got all these. I've got to start looking through and checking to make sure that I have them correct. And if they equal out, they will make sure to equal. And that's the function that actually works. But you have to go through and check everything else, even though it's multiple choice. So we work through all the problems on the page. So again, we're looking at which one worked. We said A didn't, B did, C and D did not. So the way that you can incorporate the function rule into your chart is just by putting it in the middle column. So if we make a function table and graph it, we'll graph later. We're just working on the function rule right now. This is where you can pick numbers. You have a choice. Pick small numbers, don't pick large numbers. So once you pick those, now you're going to shut them into the function rule and you're going to solve for the output. There's your output results. Once we get into the graphing section, we'll actually go ahead and graph them. If I asked you what the domain was, this is what you'd give me. That is your x. If I asked you for the range, you'd give me the output and the ordered pairs would have followed and that's the part that we would use to graph them. So again if we give you this as a function we want to go through and pick numbers and again be nice to yourself. Put the numbers in for the variable, solve, and now you have your output. So again I could ask you for the domain, I could ask you for the range, and all will look at the ordered pairs and you can kind of keep them in the chart as the ordered pairs go. So one other one, here's our function. Function rule is 2x minus 1. We're going to pick four numbers again and sometimes it depends on four numbers, three numbers, that's up to what the assignment chart gives you. 
So again, we're going to fill in what we know, we're going to solve it, and we're going to get our output. And from here, we're going to take these values and we're going to graph them as we go through this section. So again, our domain is 1, 2, 3, 4. Our range is 1, 3, 5, and 7. Ordered pairs are, once you put them together, again, comma, to separate and a parentheses to group them. So again, there's no shortcuts into these problems. You have to do all the math. You have to show all your work because you have to make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to. So just to refresh a little bit or review, function tables are not impossible. You need to analyze all the numbers. You need to check everything inside the function tables. So hopefully if you have questions, you'll ask them in class. And you have your notes. Other than that, good luck.